Well, if it's Tuesday, and it is, this must be the collector's attic. Yes. And again, we're not up in the attic, we're down in the shop. Yes. And not because it's hot up there, which it has been, but in this particular case, because the models and stuff that we're working with are down here, so why go up there? This week, we're looking at this magnificent model. This is a HO scale brass engine, and two different companies uh, offered this. This is the Union Pacific Experimental Steam Turbine. Union Pacific made two of these, number one and oddly number two. And uh, the two companies that offered it, the first company was Alco and the second company was Overland. Oh. Alco sold it, no details, no paint, straight up brass engine. Mm. And I forget how many they made, not a lot, somewhere around a hundred of those. This is one of those. Wow. And uh, I had uh, Warren's Custom Services paint it, and I had Ralph Gochner, our good friend Ralph Gochner, do the detailed uh, sideboards. They're actually cast out of nickel, and they light up, and they're just amazing because oh, the, wow. the Alco model didn't come with that. When uh, uh, people saw how neat these were, I think that with the Warren paint job and Ralph's sideboards, I believe there were nine of those made. And uh, everybody wanted one, needless to say only nine people could get them. And so Overland made some deals to, to reproduce this with the sideboards, factory paint, and all of that sort of thing. And those are around two. These, uh, these models, particularly the Overland, because what everybody wants is the painted with the sideboards, and the only way you can get that is find one of these nine or one of the 74 uh, overlands that were made. 74 of the number one and about 50 of the number two. Wow. They've become something of the holy grail in HO uh, brass engine collecting. If you can find one of the Alcos undecorated without the paint the way they were originally sold, they go for around $1,000. If you can find the Overland with the factory paint job and the light up sideboards and so on, those go $21, $2,200, something like that. This one being one of those nine that have the Warren paint job and the Ralph Gochner sideboards, I have no idea. Uh, if any of those nine ever come up for sale, I'll, uh, <laughs> then we'll, we'll know. Let you know. But they've never come up for sale. The original nine owners, myself included, have just never wanted to get rid of one. And so there they are. Wow, but, now uh, I'm noticing the little louvers are moving or else I've got nuts. Yeah, no, these are, these are functional louvers. On the original locomotive, the experimental steam turbine, which unfortunately didn't work out super well for the Union Pacific, they built the two experiments and that's all. But the hope was to build a steam engine that was kind of a hybrid between a steam engine and a diesel electric. So this is an electric engine, it has electric traction motors and a lot of them as you can see. There's a lot of wheel trucks here. Mm -hmm. And it has a boiler and it has a steam turbine and the steam turbine generates the electricity for the traction motors, and then the boiler is a closed system. And so the reason for these elaborate louvers are to condense the water back into water, condense the steam back into water, feed it back to the turbine. Oh. So it's a closed system. It doesn't need to take on water ever. And that was the really tricky part of this. But it also gave them the ability to hook the two units together, number one and number two, as they were electric. One crew could operate from one, both engines, multi-unit. Well, today we take that for granted. But with a steam engine, you just didn't do that. And it's hard to believe that this thing is a steam engine, but it is, in fact, a steam engine. Wow. It's an experimental steam turbine. Mm. It did lead uh, to some advancements in uh, locomotive technology, uh, ultimately the gasoline turbines and that sort of thing, which worked out reasonably well until the price of the fuel went up. And, and I believe those things used somewhere around a gallon, a gallon of fuel per three seconds, something like oh. that. So the, the, 
And it, when the fuel was essentially free because they ran on uh, fuel that nobody could refine, and so they were just using some basically crude oil, bunker C fuel, oh, had why? no real value. But when they figured out how to, to turn that into gasoline later on, this inferior crude, its value went up and that pretty much killed the, uh, the gas turbines. At any rate, um, the, the diesel electric, all they did was replace the closed system with the condenser with a mm. diesel engine, and of course that's what, what we're using today. But in its very first iteration, or one of its very first iterations, it was a steam engine. Wow. And so these two companies have modeled that, and uh, isn't that just the most beautiful and amazing thing? The detail is amazing. I can't believe those little louvers are actually Yeah, the working. little louvers work. Uh. <laughs> it's, it's quite spectacular. No it's kidding. also got a safety light here. They, they utilized that on the Union Pacific for a while. There's a beacon mounted in the top of the cab that shoots up into the air like a searchlight. The idea being uh, that you would, these could sneak up on you. They weren't quite as clattery and noisy as a steam locomotive. <laughs> and they didn't produce the big plume of smoke and steam into the air. And so the idea was, well, if we put this beacon on there <laughs> shooting straight up, even off at a distance, you'll see it coming at night. Let there be light. Let there be light. <laughs> so you'd actually see this kind of cone of light oh coming my. across the landscape cool. toward you. Right. Uh, an idea that never really caught on or worked out. But, but there it is. There this, it this is. That little, is awesome. Well, there it is. A very interesting, very rare, very unusual brass model of a very unusual prototype locomotive. And the detail. Oof. And the detail. Well, if you, if you haven't been over to the channel, do pop over to the channel. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. It helps us out and it gives us stats for Google and that sort of thing. And that also lets you be notified if you click on your little notification bell uh, that will appear after you subscribe. And then you can get uh, email or text message notifications, however you want to be notified. <laughs> And the easy way to get over to the channel and become a subscriber is with the infamous subscribe button. You ready for it? Zoink! Round button right there. Mm -hmm. That is the subscribe button. <laughs> well, we're not sure how you found this movie on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring. And we will see you here in a couple of days with the Sunday show. <laughs> we'll see we'll you see then. Bye-bye.